are their fruits, you will know them. How can one examine the fruits of any group if one does not do a thorough study of that group's teachings, practices, and history? If you are studying with Jehovah's Witnesses, ask yourself, are you fully informed of what you are getting into? Why should that be of concern? Stephen Hassan, a licensed mental health counselor, has highlighted the concerning practices of certain groups called information control. Such groups may deliberately withhold information, distort information, to make it more acceptable, prohibit critical information, especially from former members. They may have a habit of misquoting statements or using them out of context. And for a newcomer, most concerning would be the inclination to compartmentalize information into outsider versus insider doctrines. Do Jehovah's Witnesses practice any of these things? Ultimately, this is something you will have to decide. If you are studying, in fact, no matter what group you are looking into, it is in your best interest to look for the signs of information control. Some groups indeed have outsider doctrines and insider doctrines, a face they present to the world and another face they present to their inner core. A newcomer would only be presented with the easy to agree teachings first and given basic screen answers to their questions. Things would be presented in such a way that things might seem quite reasonable. Only over the course of weeks and months would such a person be introduced to insider doctrines, those teachings that are harder to accept, and which frankly might have halted the newcomer in their tracks if they had heard them up front. The transition from outsider teachings to insider teachings is gradual. It's sort of like cooking a tough cut of meat. To make the meat digestible, one might have to cook it low and slow. At the end of that long process, the meat might come out so tender, all you need is a fork. In a similar way, some groups don't just let people join. They put them through a program that is low and slow. At the end of such a process, a person might heartily embrace things that before they would have found unacceptable. This type of process is called indoctrination. And even after a person joins, this process never ends. And in fact, the further up the hierarchy a person goes, the more insider information they would be introduced to that is not accessible to the rank and file. In the Jehovah's Witness organization, there are publications and resources for outsiders. And then there are resources only for members. There are publications and resources for the rank and file. And then there are resources that are off limits to those not in the right inner circles. For the public, often one answer is given for general consumption and another for the flock. What are some things that Jehovah's Witnesses will not likely tell an interested one? You might not be told that you would not be allowed to accept blood, even to save your life in an emergency, nor would you be allowed to donate blood. Later you would learn that you could accept blood fractions that come from donated blood. You might not learn of the thousands who have died because of this teaching, including children. You might not hear how in times past, the organization banned organ transplants and vaccinations. At first, you might not be taught that the organization's governing body is the one and only channel God is using, called the faithful and discreet slave and that your spiritual health and relationship with God is dependent on recognizing this channel. Nor would you be told that this faithful slave was appointed to such an office by Christ in the year 1919. At first, you might not be taught that you would have to accept all the teachings of the governing body, which is represented by the Watchtower Society. When it comes to what you would have to believe or practice, you couldn't simply choose based upon your own conscience. It would be all or nothing. At first, you might not be told about the disfellowshipping arrangement. That is, that if you violate Watchtower rules or question Watchtower teachings, that you would be subject to a secret tribunal called a judicial committee. You might even be disfellowshipped that is expelled, and all Jehovah's Witnesses, even family members living outside your household, would have to shun you. 
they would not only stop associating with you, they would cease speaking to you, not even saying hello. Never mentioned are the many suicides this is caused by those who have lost family and friends, indeed their entire support structure. At first you might not be discouraged from having friends who are not Jehovah's Witnesses, but over time you will be told that they are a bad association, no matter how well behaved they are. Nor would you be told that higher education is frowned upon. At first you might not be told that you would have to stop celebrating all holidays, or that to be a member in good standing you would have to engage monthly in the door-to-door -door work or other evangelizing activity or that you would have to attend all meetings. You would be constantly admonished to do more, join a theocratic ministry school, comment frequently, prepare for all meetings, pioneer. Often you would hear the soul-searching question, could you do more? Perhaps take a part-time job, do with less, preach more. Could you sell your home? Could you move to where the need is greater? Perhaps join in the building work, you would not learn until later the all-important teachings about 1914 and the Gentile times, or the teaching that Jerusalem was destroyed in 607 B.C. rather than 587 B.C., the date given by every history book. Indeed, there would be many teachings revolving around the prophecies in Daniel and Revelation, where the fulfillments all seem to be applied to the Watchtower organization. For instance, that the seven trumpet blasts being related to conventions held in the 1920s. You might not learn of the failed predictions of the end coming in 1914, 1925, or 1975, to name a few predictions, or that it was promised to those in 1918 that millions then living would never die, or that the second president, Judge Rutherford, deeded a mansion in San Diego to the ancient worthies so that they could live there upon their resurrection which had been expected at any moment. Or that the first president, Pastor Russell, taught that the Giza pyramid was the Bible in stone, and by measuring passages of this pyramid, they could confirm predictions about the future. At first, you might not learn that the United Nations is regarded as the image of the wild beast, and certainly you will not be told that the Watchtower Society was associated with the UN as an NGO for 10 years, when in 2001 a public article that exposed this precipitated their resignation. All these things merely scratch the surface. There is so much more that could be mentioned, but time would fail us. If you choose to study, do so with both eyes open. Look past the outsider information, the spin and the whitewashing. Don't limit yourself to information coming from the organization, but look at all sides of the matter. Use all sources of information. Only then can you truly make an informed decision.